welcome back. So, today we will uh, begin the study of probability theory uh, from the basic axiomatic perspective. So, we will start building on the basic probability axioms and work towards uh, building uh, defining probability spaces, probability measures and so on. Okay. Uh, so, in this mathematical theory of probability, uh, so it is uh, it's an axiomatic theory which starts off assuming that there are there are two entities which are not defined. Okay. Uh, so, these two, so the two entities which are not def defined in the beginning are the following. So, the first is the concept of a random experiment. Okay. So, this is uh, we do not define what it is. Okay. So, just like so we have to be and we have to understand it like just in English right it is an experiment whose outcome is random all right. So, that which uh, which brings me to the second uh, undefined concept which is outcome of the random experiment. Okay. So, these two concepts are not defined. Okay. So, you cannot make a so just like in geometry you do not define a point right or number theory you do not try to define what a number is right. So, you have to start off somewhere you, you can only define certain things in terms of certain other things you understand you cannot define everything right. So, probability begins with two entities which you do not question or try to define. Okay. So, there is a random experiments uh, the random experiment. So, it is an experiment whose outcome is random just as the English uh, says and uh, it has an outcome right every time you perform this random experiment there is an outcome right. Uh, so, and that is it right you cannot say anything more about these terminologies that is all there is to it. Now, uh, everything in probability that is defined is in, defined in terms of these entities okay. and then we build up from here on. Okay. So, the first most important concept most basic concept that is defined is the concept of a sample space okay the sample space of a random experiment so it's often denoted by the capital greek letter omega okay big omega okay so it's defined as the set of all possible outcomes of the random experiment okay Okay. So, if you see this is a definition of a sample space. So, I have defined a sample space in terms of these two things I have not defined right. So, I have defined it in terms of two things which I have not defined that is that is the way it always progresses right. So, you think you understand these two things and you move on and define other things in terms of things you did not divide in the first place right that is how it works. So, uh, so this is a sample space okay. it is just a set the set containing all possible outcomes of a random experiment. So, which whatever outcome is possible everything should be included it should not leave behind any possible outcome right. Now, um, so you, you can so for example, you can always say so if it is to give an example. So, let us say toss a coin once. Okay, uh, so here you want to see, you want to know what the sample space is. Okay, so now the the thing I want to emphasize here is what a sample space is corresponding to a random experiment itself depends on what you are interested in. Okay, so it's not so if if it so happens that I'm tossing a coin that's my random experiment, and if I want to uh, know what the face it lands on. Okay, then the sample space will have two elements in it right heads and tails assuming that it does not land vertically it will have only 
two outcomes, right? Two uh, heads and tails. However, it is not true that the random experiment of tossing a coin once always have to have this color sample space. It depends on what you are interested in. Somebody else may be interested in uh, finding out how many times the coin tumbles in the air, right? In that case, your sample space is not head tail. Then, in that case, your sample space will be the number of times, the all possible number of times it tumbles. So, which is probably inte positive integers, right? Yes. Shouldn't the definition then be all possible interested outcomes? Yeah. So, which is why, which is why uh, the outcome itself depends on what the experiment is interested in, right? So, I may toss a coin, but you may be interested in counting the number of tumbles, and somebody else may be interested in the face it lands in. Right, so it's not. Uh, so the what is an outcome itself depends on what you're interested in, which is why the sample space depends on what you're interested in. Right, so this is something I want to emphasize. So if you are, so this is the experiment. Okay, so cause it. So this is what tossing a coin once. So um, if we are interested. the phase that shows up, the phase that shows, then your omega will be simply head then tails. It will only have two elements, right? there are only two possible outcomes. But for the same random experiment, so if you are, if you are interested in, in, in the number of tumbles. say right so in this case you are it's reasonable to say that your omega will be some subset of natural numbers or the natural numbers themselves right if any number of tumbles are possible then you would uh, want to choose omega equal to n right so uh, so it's not so even for a given random experiment it's not as though what is an outcome or what is the set of all possible outcomes is very much a function of what you are interested in looking at, right. So, it depends on what you are interested in studying or modeling, right. So, this is something I want to, this is a conceptual point. So, I just want to make this very clear. So, you may also, you may be interested in uh, the velocity with which the coin strikes the ground, right. It seems a bit strange, you may be interested in knowing that, right. So, in this case probably you should choose r plus or some subset of r plus, right, some positive real numbers, right. So, you understand what I am trying to say here? So, the sample space capital omega depends on uh, not only on the random experiment, but what you are interested in measuring or knowing, right. And as you can see, just here we have seen that the omega could be finite, sample zero set of all possible so that outcomes could be finite or infinite. Actually, here it is countably infinite, here it is uncountably infinite, right. So, there are all these possibilities exist. You could have an omega which is finite, you could have an omega which is countably infinite, you could have an omega which is uncountable, right. All this is possible depending on what you are interested in looking at. Right? And so an, so, an elementary outcome, so an outcome of the random experiment, so let us say you have fixed what you are interested in, okay. Uh, you let us say you are interested in the number of tumbles or whatever, right. Then, so an outcome is sometimes known as an elementary outcome, okay. So, this is also a terminology outcome and elementary outcome are one and the same, right. So, an outcome or elementary outcome is denoted by little omega 
all right this is the little this is not a w this is a uh, the the greek letter little omega and this is an element of your sample space omega n big omega okay so now uh, here is so this little omega right the choosing of the little omega is what is random all right this is what this is the thing that you have no control over okay in probability theory this is in fact the source of randomness right so you can so you have a sample space you've built a sample space of the set of all possible outcomes depending on what you're interested in and then this little omega is chosen by some you can think of it as a genie or some goddess of chance who picks it right you have no control over it and every time you run a random experiment the goddess of chance picks a little omega from this big omega okay and that you don't question okay you have no way of you have no way of controlling that okay it, you can think of it as the weather tomorrow which is like a natural phenomenon or something else right something that you have no control over right or full knowledge of or mod ability to model or something like that so this is uh, this is where the randomness is okay so this the selection of the so you have big sample space this is a set of all possible outcomes and which particular omega realizes when you run the experiment once is in fact the source of randomness you can think of it as being picked by a genie okay and it, every time you run the experiment it will be a different little omega picked from the sample space okay and this is the source of randomness in probability theory okay one this is the thing that you don't have control this is okay any questions on this Yeah, yeah. So it's an elementary. So a little, so an elementary outcome, which is why it's called an elementary outcome. So outcome is a particular point in omega. So if you can, so in this particular case, uh, if your omega is this h and t, there are only two possible elementary outcomes. So little omega must be either h or t. It could be different at different runs of the random experiment, but it is a single term. Okay, it is just a one one element of capital omega can omega be combination of tumbles and faces also yeah so if you are interested in so yeah it's really depends on what you are interested in right if you want to measure both you will have an omega big omega correspondingly right because the sample set may contain natural numbers and <laughs> no 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 that is fine yeah so it is see you have to decide what you are interested in right the you have to see you have to build a sample space after all so there is some random experiment going on either you are running it or nature is running it but what you, what you consider the sample space is obviously a function of what you are interested in determining right you may be interested in determining uh, the velocity or number of tumbles or whatever it is that you want to see you put that in the sample space but it should contain all possible elementary outcomes should not leave out any possible outcome that's all right so you have to determine that so in everything i'm going to in, so in building a probability space we have to it's our responsibility to determine what the sample space is and so on right we will see that it's our responsibility to determine what the probability should be also okay <coughs> is it okay everybody okay so for another example let's say toss a coin n times and you are and you are interested in determining the faces that okay so now we are tossing a coin n times the same coin you are talking n times okay uh, and you are interested in the, sh the the faces that show okay so now you can either you can look at this experiment as n different repeats of this experiment or you can just say this whole n trials is one random experiment that's also a valid way of looking at it 
right you toss a coin n times or toss all n coins all at once right and uh, say that that string of n outcomes that I see n uh, faces that I see uh, that that is really what I am interested in that is the elementary outcome I am interested in. So, in that case so your uh, omega will be all possible heads and tails uh, all 2 power n possibilities of heads and tails right. So, it should be h t power n right. So, each each elementary outcome each little omega in the sample space will be like h t t h h h t t some n string of heads and tails. And this this each of these elementary strings of h t t h is considered an elementary outcome if you just say that all n tosses corresponds to the random experiment right. That is also a valid way of looking at it. So, this is what kind of a sample space is this? It is a finite sample space, there are only 2 power n elements, right? n is fixed and maybe 10 or 20 or whatever, but there will be only 2 power n possible elements in the sample space corresponding to the 2 power n uh, possible strings of heads and tails, right? Now, you can also now this is let us say 1. toss a coin uh, infinitely many times and then again you are interested in the all the faces that show ok. So, now you may get you may uh, well you may wonder how do I toss a coin infinitely many times will I ever finish and so on right and then will I ever finish recording my outcomes and so on. But these things you do not worry about in probability theory ok. Again you will just say that you are tossing some coin infinitely many times. So, uh, your omega the set of all possible outcomes is what the set of all possible strings of heads and tails infinite strings of heads and tails right. So, every trial of the random experiment. So, I want to emphasize here that one trial of the random experiment is not tossing a coin once right. One trial is a particular infinite string of heads and tails ok. So, in this particular case your uh, so this is the infinite strings of heads and tails and your omega for example, may be the string h h t h t t h something right some some uh, string of infinite string of heads and tails ok. This is an elementary outcome I want it is not like that is an elementary outcome ok. So, now your random experiment itself is tossing it infinitely many times and you do not ask questions like oh will I ever finish will I ever be able to count right you do not ask that right that is the experiment and that is your sample space ok and what kind of a sample space is that it is an uncountable sample space because it is like you can say h is 0 t is 1. So, it is like 0 1 power infinity. So, now you are all very familiar with Cantor's argument. So, this guy is an uncountable sample space. right so there are many examples you can give right you can uh, take a you can take a line you are throwing darts at the line and the let's say is the 0 1 interval you are throwing darts at the 0 1 interval and uh, the elementary outcome will be some real number between 0 and 1 and the sample space will be in fact that interval itself another uncountable sample space right so these are some examples In the third case, uh, if you are interested with the velocity with which the coin strikes, hmm. so in that case, our sample space is the set of uh, real numbers. Well, so well, the positive real numbers. Yeah, actually, it's basically a continuous set. Actually, continuous. It's set an uncountable set. No, actually, I'm saying uh, it's a continuum of values. Continuous values we are counting like. Uh, yes. Okay. Like. Hmm. So if you are interested in a particular velocity then the probability that we assume will be 0 always because we are taking I have not said that right. So, that is something yeah. So, that is you are getting, getting ahead of me by several lectures right. I am only talking about the sample space now right. What are the set of all possible outcomes? I have not said anything about probability so far have I right. 
okay so sample space okay it will be okay with sample space okay so now <coughs> so in probability right so we are often interested not in whether a particular elementary outcome has occurred or not we are often interested in whether a subset of a sample space has occurred or not okay so we may be interested let's say if we toss a coin n times we may not actually say oh what is the specific string that came up we may say oh is the number of heads even right so those are those are things that are of actually uh, uh, modeling interest so to speak right so you may so you may be interested in whether this is your sample space you may not really care the whether this elementary outcome showed up or some other elementary outcome showed up but you may say oh did that subset show up right right so and so in the case of uh, so in the case of uh, this number of tumbles you can say oh did there is the number of tumbles greater than 5 right so it's not an elementary outcome in the sense right so these kind of subsets of sample space which are of interest to the modeler, of interest to the person uh, doing this business of mod probability modeling. Uh, so, this subsets are called events, okay. So, this is a, I just gave a very informal definition, okay, because the formal definition requires more build up, okay. So, uh, maybe sh I wonder if I should just write this uh, definition down. So, let us say uh, informally. subsets of okay a subset we say informally uh, let me just say subsets of omega which are of interest are called events so i may be so for example on the so toss a coin thrice and you are interested in the faces. So, your sample space is ht power 3, you may be interested in, so the event of interest may be this at least 2 heads. Okay. So, in this case you are not really asking, so I toss the coin 3 times, I am not really asking if uh, whether a particular string showed up, I am asking if at least 2 heads showed up, right. So, this corresponds to more than one elementary outcome, right. So, in particular, so what are the outcomes that uh, correspond to this? So, you, you have, uh, let us say first of all you can have all heads, right or you can have T H H right H T H H H T is there anything else that is it right. So, these are see these are the elementary outcomes when you toss a coin thrice the elementary outcome is a string of three string of heads and tails. And the event of interest, so the, you are asking me the question, oh did at least 2 heads showed up, that corresponds to these strings, which is actually a subset of that, of the sample space, okay. So, for all, I mean, so for all colloquial purposes an event is a subset of the sample space, okay, except that is not the entire story. Okay, that 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 is something we will get to later. Okay, for now you can just consider an event as a subset of the sample space. 
okay. But I put something into quotes here, they are all of interest to us, right. So, we will see later that all events are in fact subsets of the sample space, events are necessarily subsets of the sample space, but just put a caveat in your mind that not all subsets of the sample space are necessarily considered events, okay. Only those subsets which are of interest, which we are interested in assigning probabilities to in particular are called events, okay. So, all, sub, all events are subsets of omega, right. So, you can call this event A for example, right. This is A, this event is a subset of omega, right. So, all events are subsets of omega, but not all subsets of omega are necessarily considered events, okay. And this is not a point that will you will completely appreciate now, okay. So, if you are a little bit confused, okay, we, we will get to it, right. So, this is something just bear in mind, okay. Not all subsets of omega are considered events. Okay, everybody fine. So, now as I said, so let us continue on this slightly informal intuitive line. So, events are subsets of sample space which are of interest to me, okay. So, I want to build up a structure of these subsets of omega, okay. So, I want to say that say, let us say A which is a subset of omega is an event, it is of interest to me, so it is an event. So, I want to say that not A is also of interest to me, right. When an occurrence of something is of interest to me, it is very reasonable to say that its non occurrence is also <laughs> interesting to me. It is after all one determines the other, right. If A is of interest to me, I should say that A complement is also of interest to me. So, I want to be able to say that if A is an event, then A complement is an event. So, remember A complement is a subset of omega, right. But since I am only saying that events are subsets which are of interest, I want to impose a certain constraint that if A is of interest, A complement should be of interest to me, right. It per makes perfect sense, right. So, that is one thing I want, right, in this intuitive notion of interesting subsets of sample space. Uh, <coughs> another structure I want to impose is that if there are, let us say, two events A and B, they are both subsets of omega of course, A and B, uh, I want to know whether a or B, A union B is of interest, right. So, if A and B are of interest, I want to say that did at least one of them occur is of interest to me, right. These are things that I want to impose, right. And finally, I want to also say that omega itself, which is a subset of itself, the sample space, that is sure to occur, right. So, if any time I run a random experiment, the omega itself will occur, right. After all, the omega contains all possible outcomes of the random experiment. So, you may say that uh, omega itself should be an interesting event, right. The sample space itself as, a sub, as considered a subset of itself must be an interesting event, right. So, this is the structure we are build, building up towards, okay, this, th these three things, right. That omega itself should be an interesting, uh, when A is interesting, A complement should be interesting and when A and B are interesting then A union B should be interesting, okay. So, that is what I am building building up towards. Oh, by the way, there is just one uh, little uh, definition I forgot. So, maybe I should put that here, definition an event is said to occur if omega is in Okay, so that is a uh, fairly simple definition. I am just saying that, so I am considering some subset of the sample space. I say that, uh, let us say that is an event and I say that, that event occurs if my elementary outcome lands in that set, right. So, this goddess of chance picks a little omega, right. That little omega may be in this set or may be somewhere else, right. If that little omega so happens to be in this A, then I say that the event A has occurred, right. So, in this particular case, uh, if uh, the elementary outcome is any of these guys, then I say that the event corresponding to this guy, you know, at least two heads has occurred, 
okay that's just a question of terminology okay it's just a uh, name okay so far okay so okay so going back to what i was just saying i want to impose certain structure to these events right i want to say that a is of interest a complement is of interest if a and b are of interest there of their events then a union b should be of interest and omega itself should be of interest so this structure leads to what is known as an algebra okay this concept is uh, mathematically known as an algebra okay so let's put definition So, as usual, so omega is the sample space, okay. A collection F naught of subsets of omega is called an algebra. if the following three properties should be satisfied. So, the null set should be in the algebra, if A is an F naught, then A complement is an F naught and 3 if A, so A is a set and B is a set in F naught, then A union B is in F naught. <coughs> so, this is scripted F, okay. So, there is one question of uh, notation I want to clarify right away, okay. So, when I am talking about sets, okay. So, when I am talking about sets, I will use capital English letters uh, and when we are talking about not necessarily English letters actually even omega, this is a capital letter, okay. This omega is a Greek letter after all and when you are talking about elements of a set, we will use small letters, small omega or small x, you know or small letters. So, we should write a, so a statement like that should this is an element of a set right and similarly, so when I write some something scripted right, it is a collection of sets right. So, you this is a set right and you collect many of these sets a collection of sets is indicated with a scripted letter ok. So, this is a convention we will follow, we will stick to as, as much as possible, okay. So, I will have x belongs to A, uh, but when I write, when I write the sub, let us say some subset sign, these two must be of the same type, right. They, they must be both sets in this case. Uh, here, they are, this is an element that is a set, right. And for example, I can write A is an element of F naught, F naught is a collection of sets. So, here is an element, here is a collection of sets. So, here it is this is an element, this is a set, this is a set, this is a collection of sets. So, that is like a hierarchy, right. And similarly, I may write, write some F1 is a subset of F1 is contained in F0, right. F1 may be some collection, F0 may be some other collection. This is contained in that means all the sets which are in F1 will be contained in which, which are which are also elements of if not right. So, this is like a hierarchy okay, this is something you have to get used to. So, capital letters sets, small letters elements and scripted letters are collections of sets okay. And of course, you can also talk about collections of collections of sets 
right and so on right this is whole hierarchy. So, so in that spirit so I have denoted f naught as a collection of subsets of big omega right. So, big omega is sample space and it has many subsets right possibly finite possibly infinite possibly even uncountable right. So, this has many subsets and uh, that is a collection of uh, subsets of omega is said to be an algebra if these three constraints are satisfied. So, we, we should have that the null set should always be an element of the algebra all right and when a is an element of the algebra a complement is always an element of the algebra. Some people write omega here right it does not if you have this then 5 the complement of that is omega right. So, you can either write omega or phi here no big deal. And here you are saying that if A is an element of F naught and B is an element of F naught then A union B is an element of F naught this is like this is the structure that I was talking about okay. So, any collection so what is an algebra after all? So, an algebra is a collection of subsets of my sample space which has certain properties it must be closed under complementation and if I take two elements it must be closed under union and after all and then the null set should be contained in it okay. So, from these uh, from this structure you can easily prove that if you have n n elements of the algebra a 1 a 2 a n let us say they are all in f naught then a 1 the union of all these guys will be in f naught right. So, so this maybe you should do it as a homework so so exercise let a 1 a 2 a n see these are all subsets of omega let us say all of these are elements of the algebra you can show that union a i is in f naught and intersection is in so n is a fixed number here any fixed finite number and you are considering n subsets of the sample space which are all elements of the algebra okay using these these are called axioms of algebra using these axioms of the algebra you can prove that all these finite unions and finite intersections are in fact elements of the algebra. Can someone indicate to me how one would do this let us say union first. Uh, so, for three elements you can say well if you have a b and c a 1 a 2 a 3 let us say uh, you know that a 1 union a 2 is element of f naught. So, if you union that with a 3 which is also an element of f naught you should get another element of f naught. So, we want to just prove it for any n you will use induction right you can use induction very trivially right. So, this you can prove easily right how do you prove that you can use de Morgan's law right after all this intersection this can be written as. So, this can be written as union i equals 1 through n a i complement the whole complement right this is by de Morgan's law right. So, after all a i complement are events whenever a i are event a i complements are events and union of all that is uh, sorry I am sorry. So, a i uh, what did I say a i is are all elements of the algebra a i then a i complements are elements of the algebra. So, union is an element of the algebra the complements same right. So, so this is an element of so this is very clearly an element of f naught. So, you are done right. So, this is the structure you 
this is the structure you want to impose on these events right and that leads to this mathematical uh, structure uh, called algebra algebra of subsets fine everybody okay so if you want to say it in words an algebra of subsets is simply the collection of subsets which contains null set and it should be closed under finite union and finite intersections complements finite unions and therefore under finite intersections it comes out as a consequence of de morgan's law right it's a collection of subsets closed under complementation and finite unions not unions finite unions okay i want to make this very very clear okay finite unions okay and therefore also finite intersection because of de morgan's law okay so this is the structure you want to impose for these events ideally right so events we have still not defined what it is right we only said it's some some interesting subset of the sample space right so is this enough right so let us take an example yes so i i only made the statement that an algebra is uh, i only define what an algebra is right an algebra i have i've said is a collection of subsets which is closed under complementation and finite unions right this n is finite remember right it can be anything but it has to be finite right and finite intersections by de morgan's law that's all i have said hmm you have defined it which one the thing you derived using yeah 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 so you can actually jolly well define it like this also right in this case some people define algebra as oh if a1 a2 an is in f0 then the union of a1 to an must be in f0 right they both if you define it for two elements you get the n element version or you can just define it as the n element union right for all n right it must be closed under finite unions and this is something you don't put in the axiom because it automatically follows from union and this complement uh, axiom right you apply both together with de morgan's law you get this this you never put in the axiom because you can prove it right no it's just a collection of subsets of it can be infinite yeah this f not can have infinitely many no problem right it can, it can have infinitely many subsets of omega right but all i'm saying is it's an algebra it's called an algebra if it's closed under complementation and finite unions and finite intersections the mm. union and intersection the de morgan's law is no constraint only to finite it is also no 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 de morgan's law is valid always for all unions and intersections it is always valid but i am saying that an algebra is only closed under finite unions okay i am defining an algebra as a structure among subsets which has the property that a null set is contained in it complements it's closed under complementation and it's closed under finite unions so that finite is very very important okay that's what a algebra is so it turns out so it's a uh, so you you so it seems like intuitively this is enough right uh, because after all you are closed under any finite unions so it turns out uh, though that in order to make in see in order to actually study events of interest in day to day in this modeling of probability actually this closure under finite unions is actually a little bit short of what you actually need okay in order to make this uh, a proper interesting probability theory uh, this closure under finite unions is a little bit short of what you need okay you need a little more structure than an algebra okay 
so that is what uh, you, there are some examples you can use to motivate it. So let us say that you are tossing, so let us say you are tossing coins and you will toss until you see the first head. Okay. Okay, if you have a situation like that, let us see what the outcomes are. So, this is your experiment. Okay. So, you may have the first thing may be a head, you are done, you will stop, right? The first time you see a head, you will stop, or maybe you will have a head and then a tail, and then you will stop, right? And or you may have two tails and a head then you may stop and so on right you may have t t t h dot 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 right but you will toss until you see the first head okay that's your experiment so this is the set of all possible outcomes right the string of faces that show See, you may be interested, uh, let us say, so, so you may be interested in some event like this. Uh, let us say the event is, is the total number of tosses even. Okay. All right. So this is this is the question I want to answer. Okay, and this is uh, this is what I want to be considered an interesting event. Let us say this is what I'm interested in studying. Now we are so let us say this is my sample space. Okay, let me say that. Let us say I build my, let us say I take each of these elementary outcomes okay, and I let us say I try to build an algebra from it. Okay. So, let if I take all these elementary outcomes, so I will take oh this is an elementary outcome, so I have to include its complement, right. Then I have to, then I have to take that and include its complement, this and include its complement and so on. And then I will also have to go on and include all these finite unions. I have to include uh, that union, that that union, that complement, and so on, right? So that's how I build my algebra, right? Correct. So according to my F naught. Now the problem is this guy, this event. Let's say this. Uh, this may let me call this A, right? This this A is actually consists of the following elements. What does it have? Uh, t h t t t h and so on I, I hope this is right. So, um, what is the argument I want to make now? Huh, so, this is all these guys that I am interested in. So, this is the subset of the sample space I am interested in. However, if I try to just build, uh, so if I take elementary outcomes here little, uh, so each of these elementary outcomes include them in the F naught and then I have to include their complements and then I have to include all these finite unions. But if you do that you will notice something like this it will never be contained in your algebra because this has this what kind of this is a countably infinite set right. This is also a countably infinite subset of this set right. So, this set you can never build by just taking these elementary count outcomes taking their complements and taking finite unions. So, you can actually verify that this A is not, you can never build this A by just taking these elementary outcomes and taking complements and finite unions. After all, this is an infinite union, inf countably infinite union of elementary outcomes, right. This is, see this is 
that union that union that, but it is a countably infinite union right. So, a perfectly reasonable sounding event this is something I may be very much interested in in, in modeling right what is the what is the event is that did the event of uh, total number of heads being even just occur right that is a perfectly reasonable event one would think and one would want to make it an interesting event, but the structure we have just imposed the, namely the structure of an algebra is does not seem to be enough to build this from the elementary outcomes just think about it right. So, which is why I said that uh, this structure of an algebra it falls a little bit short of what is actually needed to make probability theory interesting right. So, that leads us uh, to a slightly stronger notion a slightly stronger structure among subsets known as sigma algebra okay. that is something we will cover next class. Okay. So, we have defined algebra today. So, we will we have motivated why we need uh, not just finite unions, but we are going to say that I need closure under complementation and countably infinite unions okay. and that structure is called a sigma algebra okay. and that is what gives you a very rich probability theory okay. that is what gives you the ability to model even fairly elementary events like this right. So, fairly simple events like this which algebra is not able to capture right. So, probability theory operates with a sigma algebra of subsets okay, that we will see next class. Thanks.